The abuse of power by governments can arise from a myriad of causes, often rooted in a combination of historical, cultural, and individual factors that vary significantly across different contexts. These abuses typically stem from a desire to maintain control, suppress dissent, or enrich the ruling elite at the expense of the general populace. There are several common reasons why authority and human nature converge in a not-so-good way in government. Here are eight of those reasons. One, concentration of power. When power is concentrated in the hands of a few, or when checks and balances are weak or non-existent, it becomes easier for those in power to abuse it. This can happen in authoritarian regimes, but it can also occur in democracies if institutions meant to limit power become weakened or corrupted. Two, lack of transparency and accountability. Governments lacking transparency and accountability create fertile ground for the proliferation of power abuses. In environments where official actions remain obscured and leaders are not held responsible for their misconduct, the mechanisms for checking power falter. Consequently, when citizens and other governmental branches are left in the dark about leadership activities, detecting and addressing abuses becomes more challenging, allowing unethical behavior to flourish unchecked. 3. Corruption Corruption acts as both a precursor and consequence of power abuse within governance structures. Initially manifesting in minor infractions, it can quickly escalate into a systemic issue, severely eroding public trust in governmental institutions. This degradation of trust facilitates an environment where officials can more easily misappropriate resources and authority for personal gain, perpetuating a cycle of corruption and abuse. 4. Weak rule of law. In societies where laws are not applied consistently or where the judicial system is under the control of political forces, there can be little deterrent to abusing power. If leaders know they are not subject to the law, they may feel free to act without regard for the rights of others. 5. Cultural factors. In certain instances, deeply ingrained cultural attitudes towards authority and power significantly contribute to the perpetuation of power abuse. And societies where there is a traditional emphasis on obedience to authority figures over the assertion of individual rights, there is a higher propensity for the populace to tolerate or even rationalize abuses of power. This cultural predisposition can lead to a less vigilant, more accepting stance towards authoritarian practices and systemic injustices. 6. Crisis Situations Governments frequently acquire new powers in response to emergencies such as wars, economic downturns, or public health crises. While these powers are often necessary for addressing immediate threats, they can lead to abuses if they are not meticulously monitored and constrained. Without proper oversight, leaders may exploit these situations to consolidate their own power, suppress dissent, and extend their authority beyond the emergency, thus undermining democratic principles and civil liberties. 7. Ideological extremism. Leaders or political parties harboring extreme ideologies often adopt the belief that their unique vision for society justifies all necessary means, even if it involves the abuse of power. This conviction can precipitate widespread human rights violations, suppression of opposition voices, and various other forms of abuse. In their pursuit of a specific societal model, they may disregard legal and ethical boundaries, leading to significant societal and political consequences. 8. Historical Injustices In certain scenarios, historical grievances and injustices can fuel a cycle of abuse, with those in power rationalizing their actions as retribution or attempts to rectify past wrongs. This justification can deepen existing societal divisions and foster an environment where further abuses are normalized and perpetuated, entrenching a cycle of vengeance and injustice within the community. In summary, it's important to note that these reasons are not mutually exclusive and often interact in complex ways. Also, while certain structures and conditions can make abuse of power more likely, it ultimately comes down to the choices of individuals in power. That's why institutions, civil society, and international norms and agreements play crucial roles in preventing and addressing abuses of power.